What's better than earning money from a 9 to 5 job? It's earning money while you sleep, which is made possible if you start investing. You're listening to the Real Estate Investing Demystified with your very own dynamic duo, Ava Benasaki and August Biniaz. Tune in as we discuss everything real estate, both on the passive and active sides. We feature life-changing stories of today's real estate leaders that will help build your own roadmap to success. This is a show that will lead you to diversified portfolio, a much bigger revenue, and a next level venture that brings you a smooth cash flow. Let's get this episode started. All right, everyone, welcome back to Real Estate Investing Demystified. 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 I like that name, right? Demystified. (laughs) It is mystifying real estate. It is. Because there's just so many different businesses within the real estate world. Yes. I thought I knew everything about real estate. And Mr. Know It All over here. Until I thought I was Mr. Know It All <laughs> until I got involved in real estate, private equity, and I realized I didn't know much. Yeah, it's going to be a forever lifetime learning journey. Well, I, I say I'm getting pretty close to the peak here, but yeah, uh, yeah. you know, August, uh, August but, likes but, to nerd uh, out all the time. Every continued day, education day. is always very important, but when you when you understand the basics of real estate, private equity, capital raising. And then understand about whatever asset classes you're focused on, in our case, multifamily value add, and understand about the business model, which is basically value add. Yeah. You know, there's keeping keeping up with what's happening with the market is the most important thing. Right now, we're in mid-August 2023, and real estate has four cycles. You have a recovery, expansion, yeah. hyper supply, and recession. And recession. Yeah. I would say currently we're in that recession phase of the market. Yes. That's what I would guess. Which internally as a team means equals buying stage. Internally as a team means that we literally got lucky with all kinds of luck that exists. Oh lots gosh. of luck that we didn't we've close been, on a deal for last year because there is distress. We've been thinking, thinking the universe. Yes. Pretty so much every day on a, we, on a daily we, we, basis. We want to blame it. So grateful it. for we, we, the position that we're in yeah. at CPI Capital we here. Want, we want to allocate it that this was all because of my personal genius that we didn't close on a deal, <laughs> but some of it was luck. It just, it just turned out that, you know, we were eager to do a deal, but things weren't making sense. There was a lot of, you know, At CBA Capital, we don't have to do a deal just to keep the lights on. So we're very hyper cautious, very selective. And we decided to kind of sit back as there was so much turbulence in the market and it really served us yeah, and our investors. So, and so. now we're able to look at come, come into the market. We've, we've been working on our investor database. We've been working on our, uh, investor communications, investor nurture, and investors are calling us saying, hey, do, do we have a deal? What's happening? And now we're seeing some distress in the market. So we're excited to get into the market and buy properties that were bought at $200,000 a door. Yeah. And now they're coming to the market at $150,000 a door. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So, and I have my my finger on the pulse of investors and they are calling and there's back-to-back meetings. Yes. Investors are, yes. Investor sentiment is getting better and better every day but so yeah really so very it. important part of our business is marketing we're excited about our guests today and a uh, quick thing about our guests we've met our guests at many of the conferences we've gone to he's always energetic he's always positive he's always has a smile on his face he's always making me smile yes he's he is absolutely <laughs> and uh and and we're excited to have him on. and this is a long time coming so we got to we got to uh, ask him to forgive us because it was a long time coming that we were going to get him on our show yeah. but we're excited to be here because it's a segment of the business that doesn't get a lot, lot of attention but it's one of the most important parts of the business and that's marketing so marketing and we talk we're going to break that down what what do we mean by marketing but Ava go ahead tell our viewers and listeners about our guest awesome guys okay so today we're joined by John Simpson now John Simpson is the founder and CEO of Criterion B a dynamic marketing agency based in Dallas and focused on serving the multifamily industry. Now, he launched the company in 2007 and chose to focus specifically on multifamily in 2017 because he saw that owners, developers, and vendors had a need for more effective and efficient digital marketing support. So not stopping there, in 2020, he launched Swifty, an affordable multifamily marketing platform that makes it incredibly easy for owners to create websites for their properties and execute all of their online marketing needs in less time. Then in 2022, he took the next step and became a multifamily investor himself to firsthand experience the struggles partners face so he can better serve his clients. So we believe this interview with John will bring great value to active investors looking to 
looking to increase their NOI on their multifamily properties. John, welcome to the show. Welcome Thank to the show, my man. Here. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. I've been looking forward to it for all those months that I've been waiting to be on the show. So we're good. <laughs> Here awesome. we are. <laughs> um, you know, John, you have many years of experience in marketing, but could you tell us about when and why your focus switched to real estate marketing and then particular, particularly multifamily? Yeah, so it's probably in 2012 is what we had kind of looked at. We were an ad agency for, for well, a marketing agency for ad agencies doing all of their digital work. And uh, we were the lowest man on the totem pole. We were doing all the grunt work, did all the programming. We got to work on some really amazing projects, but uh, we were tired of always being last, right? And, and we caught the brunt of all the crap that runs down the hill from, a, from above us, right? So um, we looked around and at that point we had already built Amley's corporate website and for an agency or through an agency. And we had built um, some projects for UDR and done some stuff like that. And there were a million cranes in Dallas. So we said, we need to pick a niche. Let's pick construction. There's so many, there's so much going on in the space. So that's kind of where our focus shifted was really to try to take ownership of the work and of our clients and uh, to stop being the lowest on the totem pole there. And there's Dallas is a huge construction market. So Awesome. Yeah. D Dallas is also a huge market for multifamily, particularly syndication. A lot of syndicators, big names like um, uh, Brad Sumrocks and, uh, you know, Mark Kenny's of the world and many others have started from from Dallas and uh, have really grown their businesses. So it has a big multifamily fraternity there in Dallas. Uh, but yeah, going back to this topic of marketing, marketing, in, in our opinion, is one of the most important aspects of real estate, private equity or, or in, in the process of syndicating deals. But marketing is very important to be top of the funnel, to bring investors in, to know that your firm even exists for them to then invest with you. So our focus here at CPI was marketing to build a brand around ourselves, around the company uh, and, and connect with investors, create a lot of content online like this podcast and YouTube show we're currently recording. Um, but that's, again, that's a very important part. But now, uh, you know, being, being in the operations side of the business, we realize that marketing is also very important when it comes to you know, post closing after you've purchased an asset, you're 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 there to execute the business plan. There needs to be a level of marketing to get your clients, which are your tenants, to come to your building, to for you to be able to increase your rents, for you to be able to increase your occupancy, and that's the uh, basically the, the 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 basic part of our conversation with you today. So mm -hmm. maybe if you could give us a crash course on a syndicator, an investor purchases the multifamily property. They are now uh, taking it over. At one point, do you get involved mm -hmm. and then walk us through the whole journey? And I believe you have a slide presentation as well. So feel free to um, share your uh, share your uh, screen anytime you wish. Uh, I'll just see here if I could. We're going to make you co-host. There you go. Awesome. While you're doing that, I'll let you know. Also, so we help help developers from ground zero. So some some of our developer clients will contact us before they've even purchased the land that they're gonna be building on. We get involved as early as we possibly can. We work with their interior design and the architectural firms. Our, a lot of the stuff that we do for our clients um, affects everything from the iron work that might be on the balconies to uh, the rugs they choose, to the fabrics they pick out for their clubhouses, everything from that level for our ground up development on anything that's a class Quick C. question, John, when yeah. you're talking about ground up development, this is for build to sell product or build to rent? Uh, well, it'd be, most of this is going to be multifamily apartment complexes. So class A development. Got it. Got it. So we work on these all over the country. Um, and oftentimes, you know, they're buying the land, they're building either a high rise or they might be garden style. It could be a mid rise. But whatever it is that they're that they're working on, they try to get us involved um, as early as the architects, right? Because we do the brand and the coloring and all of that side of the building process. So sometimes we're involved, um, oh man, months, years before they're built. We we were working on a project in downtown Dallas in Plano, really, that uh, Plano, Texas, that was started in 2015. Uh, construction didn't start till 2018. And then the uh, launch actually happened of the building was in March of 2020. So right when COVID hit is when they launched. But we worked on that project from day day one, naming it, 
and designing the logo for it, and then handling all of the construction banners all the way through monument signage, interior signs, like everything for that development. Um, the groundbreaking ceremony, the uh, grand opening party, like all of the different pieces of it. And so one project like that could last eight to 10 years. We're still working on it. We still do all the social media and all of that for that building as well. So class A new development is a different beast altogether. I know a lot of the listeners here are gonna be doing a lot of the uh, value add and hybrid type of, of purchases where you're looking for those class Bs and Cs, upgrading them, leasing them up, and then looking for the next buyer for that property. And for those, we typically are gonna get involved as early as we can, which is typically during due diligence, right? So before they're purchased, it's, there's no, no marketing dollars um, being spent at that point, but just educating and learning what are the things that you should be looking for? What are the things you should be doing from a marketing perspective, even in due diligence? How do you build a marketing plan? All of that kind of stuff around this property you're about to buy. So I'll jump jump in real quick here. Quick, quickly on there, but th this like when you get involved in that early stage, you could also see uh, you could also see uh, losses or or where the other the current owner is not utilizing certain aspects of marketing to bring in more uh, uh, you know clients and tenants saying hey they, these guys don't even have a website or hey these guys don't their website is not very comprehensive so there could be ways where you can see inefficiencies and assist, and tell us hey if, if we if our team takes over we're going to help your occupancy and get better type of tenants in there as well so that I think that would be aspect of it as well right yeah, absolutely. And actually, I'll give you a, a download you can add to the notes here later that we have a, a bunch of different checklists. So we have a due diligence marketing checklist, pre-closing marketing checklist, closing marketing checklist, post-closing marketing checklist, right? So these, these different tools that all you have to do is just carry it with you when you do due diligence. What do the signs look like? Are, you know, are we going to rename the property? Are we going to need to rebrand the property? Are we going to need new more wayfinding signs? Do people know where the leasing office is, right? All these types of things that it's just for your benefit. So you know, okay, this is all the stuff I'm going to have to update or change once we purchase the property. So yeah, we can make all those available to your right. listeners. As well. So you're involved in every aspect of that. And uh, before, before kind of bringing the cart before the, uh, the what is it called? The, uh, before the horse, <laughs> your packages it also includes that where you get involved and you do all of that encompasses everything. Is that? Well, it can, it depends on what, on what level you hire us at. Okay. So um, for Swifty clients, we make the resources like these checklists available for you. It is a self-service platform. So when you're, when you're leveraging us, Swifty is really a, um, it's a, it is a website, AdWords and Google business tool. Those are the three things we do. So I'm happy to have phone calls. I love talking about marketing. I'm happy to talk to anybody about it, brainstorm with you, give you some ideas. But with Swifty, you're going to get those three digital assets. Now we have lots of resources for you that are free that you can download and use. Um, with Criterion B, it is a white glove marketing agent service. So you're going to pay for the experience. But at the, at the end of the day, we do a lot of handholding and we do a lot of the work for you that I'm talking about. So and John, you would be doing that in conjunction with the property manager in most cases, right? Or the, yes, it's typically, you know, and again, you brought up a good point earlier uh, about marketing agencies or, or marketing departments within property management companies. And so we work with a lot of directors of marketing um, of these big PMs, right? Well, when you think about it, uh, their marketing departments they are project managers of the marketing piece of the marketing for these properties, right? Mm. Because you have one director of marketing who might be over 70 properties. Well, no human can actually handle the marketing for 70 properties on their own. So they're leveraging companies like myself or others to do a lot of the parts of that marketing uh, for those individual properties. So we find no fault of their own, but they are some of the most stressed out people we've ever met in our life are these marketing managers um, because you have seven, if you're managing 70 properties, that means you have 70 managers asking you for all the collateral materials, the website updates, uniforms, all these different things that they need. And when you have 70 people asking you for stuff every day, it's really hard to stay on top of it, right? And so we develop systems and plans to help them manage that process. Right. And, and to help them have less stress in their lives. So that's my goal as a, as a business owner. And why we started Swifty, we saw our clients that are these marketing directors 
and how frazzled they are. And they're, they're traveling all over the country trying to make every grand opening or every, uh, you know, visit all their properties. And they just, they're having a hard time with it. And we're like, how can I make your life easier? What can I do from a marketing perspective to make your life easier? Right. I can't, there's a lot of stuff I can't do for them, but when it comes to marketing, there's a lot we can do. So that's kind of where we where Swifty was born. Got it. Couple quick, quick, couple of quick more questions before you get into your presentation. Okay. Uh, when, when if if it, like we're we're currently in that recession phase of the market, there's a lot of deals that are coming into that distressed territory. Uh, investors, property owners are talking with their broker. They're talking with their property manager about the situation they're in. Are you would would you be kind of get involved at some point saying, hey, we need you to. Uh, push the marketing or get some more google adwords or however you guys do your thing we need to get we need to get the occupancy higher here over the next few months because we're trying to sell do you do you get involved in those stages as well when there's a need for you to increase not just to maintain yeah absolutely and the presentation will go into a lot of that on okay. how they can continue to drive uh, their their occupancy rates up right so everybody wants to hit that 95 96 percent occupancy rate to get it stabilized so they can actually get the best price for their property, right? So, and and so there's lots of factors in there, um, primarily from a driving qualified um, prospects. We do that through Google AdWords and through Google Business, but it, that's all um, for not if you don't have a good website that will convert those people into actual leads, right? So it's gonna be very important to have a stellar leasing team because even if the marketing is amazing, the goal is still to drive prospects to your leasing team to close the deal, right? So you do you do need to have a really good leasing team, um, but hand in hand with good marketing, you'll be able to get it reset. Amazing, yeah. Please go ahead. Nice, I'm looking forward. Right. Let me. I think, can you go, can you see my face there? Yes. We can see it. Perfect. So a little bit about me, real quick, to expound on what August had mentioned. So I've owned a marketing agency for almost 20 years now. Um, been in marketing for longer than that. Uh, we, we've been serving multifamily for almost a decade. It will be a decade really soon. Uh, and again, if you if you throw that site I told you about for Amelie in there, it's been well over a decade. So um, I have a love for multifamily. Uh, as I've gotten to know it every year, I put all of my eggs in that basket. So more and more and more and more every year, we're, we're focused on this in all aspects. So um, with Criterion B, we work with anybody that touches multifamily. So we've worked with Resmond. We did all of Resmond's branding. We did all of their marketing for many years. We work with lenders. We work with um, service-based companies. Just anybody that touches the industry that's trying to get in front of multifamily, we help them do that. Um, we've worked with uh, properties from coast to coast, north to south. We pretty much have, have worked with um, all sizes and shapes of properties. We love working in multifamily. Oops, there we go. Really quick about me. So we get to go all over the country, go to, go to uh, grand openings, go to events, go to association events. Um, like August said, I see them at most of the different conferences I go to. Uh, it's at least once a month, it seems like, that I'm out of the state going to visit these. So these are different grand openings and visiting clients and all of that that we did. Today, what I really want to talk about are three things about your marketing. So A, the path is how we're going to drive prospects and qualified traffic to your site. The story, what we want to tell them once they get there. And then the lease, So which basically obviously is the end goal for everybody here is to get as many leases as we can get. So the problems that we face whenever I've talked to uh, owners or managers, they're all pretty much the same. Their lack of marketing knowledge. I need to lease apartments. What am I doing wrong? I've been doing this for a long time or whatever, but we're in a different market right now. We're in a tough market right now. So what do I not know? How can I fix that? The low rate of conversion. I'm seeing a lot of people, but nobody's buying, right? We want to help you through that. And then the ROI for investors. This seems to be a really, really big one. Obviously, for all of our GPs and leads that we talk to, um, they're responsible for your money, right? And they want to make sure they're not disappointing you. So how do we help them do that? If we don't solve these problems, if we don't market the properties correctly, we're not going to find renters fast enough. We're not going to hit our, our uh, goals fast enough, right? So we're not going to find the renters and you're going to have a bunch of frustrated people. 
Okay, so, and I am gonna be speeding through this uh, as quickly as I can today. This is a, a full presentation. I do offer it on a weekly webinar as well that you can find later on or get in the show notes, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, okay, so these this is the old way. Most properties have a logo, you need a logo. And I do wanna emphasize this is not the wrong way. Okay, this is just stuff the way we've done it forever. Logo, maybe you have a website, maybe you don't, maybe you're leaning on apartments.com exclusively. Um, monument sign. I think everybody can agree. You have to have a good monument sign for your property. Banners. It could be leasing banners, etc. Facebook Marketplace. It's pretty much a must. ILS. ILS is Apartments.com. Rent.com. Apartments. Just quickly to jump in for people who might not, you know, be too super sophisticated. You're talking about outside of their company. They might be own. They might owning be owning ABC multifamily, but when they buy a property in Florida somewhere, this is particularly to do with that property that you're talking about that they've purchased. And yes, specifically, yes, this entire um, message. And I'll, I'll, I will intertwine a couple of things specifically for your capital raising and for your personal brand and stuff. But the majority of this talk, the, the presentation I'm going through with you now is going to be specifically related to your property. You bought a property and you're trying to take it from distress to stabilization as fast as possible. And it doesn't matter where you're located, right? Where this property is located, but this would be on a per property basis. So we wanna help you reach stabilization in less time for these properties. And you have to have the right technology in place to help you do that. So old way again, you might do this through Wix, GoDaddy, WordPress, Squarespace, Fiverr, your sign guy maybe does it. We, we find that a lot. Um, or they just are getting help from whoever they can, right? So problems with these, none of these are actually built for multifamily. This is the way, if you're doing it yourself, you're trying to save a buck. You're trying not to um, use all of your CapEx dollars or your, your investors dollars on the marketing aspect of it. I will tell you that you lose money every time you raise the hammer. So hire the right people to do the job for you and trust that they know what they're doing. Okay, there are tools out there, whether you're using Swifty or you're using one of my competitors, we have tools that are built specifically for multifamily. You need to leverage that. Um, these sites are not tied into your PMS. So whether you use Yardi, Resmin, Appfolio, uh, RealPage, Entrada, MRI, any of those guys, by default, use Wix or GoDaddy. You're going to do a lot of extra work to tie those in. That said, your PMS systems, they do offer websites also. These websites that they offer are tied into their systems exclusively. And so if you ever switch PMS systems, you'll also be forced to change your uh, website over as well. Then you can build a custom website, very, very costly, but they have all the bells and whistles. They also take longer to build. I'm gonna show you at the end of this, how Swifty can solve the, the problem for you very, very quickly. Actually, it's less than 45 minutes now. We can build a website, uh, get you up and running, fully functional, tied into your property management system. You're ready to go. All right, so we're gonna jump right into the path, how you drive qualified traffic. This can be done in a couple of ways, both online and offline. You're gonna have a couple things that I'm gonna say you need to be doing these, right? AdWords is a must. AdWords is an intent-based marketing mechanism, basically mean that you don't, uh, you're not going to show up, your ads are not going to show up unless I type in the right thing. So we can target our ads to, to only show to very specific demographics, okay? So when you think about this, not just from an apartment standpoint, but from a capital raising standpoint, you can, you can say, I only want to show my ads to accredited people. I want to I want to make sure I'm hitting this demographic in this area of the United States. So you can be very strategic on how you approach your AdWords. Um, so when we're running ads, I believe I go into this a little bit here, um, you're going to be driving uh, qualified people. So the, the nice thing here is our AdWords that, that we're coming up with are going to be things like uh, apartments near Phoenix, Arizona, things of that of that nature. The longer tail keywords we can come up with, so the longer the phrase is, the more specific we are, the more qualified people we're gonna find. Okay, so to give you some examples of this, uh, yeah, we talk about it a little bit on this slide. So it's pay-per-click, meaning that you're only gonna pay when someone physically clicks. 
So our ad's going to show up for tens of thousands of people, but we're only paying when they actually click on it. That's very important to know. And the cost per click is going to be based on the number, the, the keyword phrases. If I just put in apartments, that's very expensive. But if I put in apartments in Phoenix, Arizona, we can get that cost per click way down to under $2 most of the time, right? So all things that we need to, to focus on. Apologize if you hear my dog. Um, okay, so the benefits. We get increased visibility. We're only paying when they actually click. We can target specific audiences. We can create lists out of these audiences for future um, advertising as well. We can adjust our daily spend to what we can afford, right? So I would recommend nothing less than $500 a month on a media budget, meaning that's how much you're paying Google, right? Um, and we typically don't see people spend the need to spend too much over twelve to fifteen hundred dollars, right, per month per property to get the the right traffic. Uh, have great reporting, and you have the, avil the ability to see the conversions. So just a real quick, what sponsored is. So we, I'm gonna, I guess as I'm flying through this, um, you can only beat Apartments.com and the other ILSs two ways in a Google search, okay? So the first way is gonna be in paid, meaning you're buying it through Google AdWords. What you see here with the red box around it, those are the first five slots of any search, okay? So that's all gonna be paid for. After that, you can earn it in the next section where, that I'm gonna talk about here in just a second, which is gonna be Google Business. Um, other than that, organic is the last way, and that's where the ILSs have us beat. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Okay, Carrie Clark is one of my clients. She had come to us in November, said she's at 67% occupancy. She runs a property, owns a property that has 40 units in Podunk, Texas. Okay, this tiny town in Texas, 67% occupancy. And after she put a lot of these marketing practices in place, including AdWords, within six weeks, she was up to 100% occupied. So it is something you can turn on and turn off. One person's results obviously are not guaranteed for anybody else, but it shows that if you if you put sound marketing practices in place, they do work, even in tertiary markets. Okay, so just remember that. Um, another, another paid mechanism is your ILSs. So this is a cost of doing business. You must do this. Okay, you don't have to do apartments.com. You can do rent, you can do apartment list, you can do others, but you really need to do one because again, people do not randomly show up on apartments.com. They have intent. Okay, whenever you can be in front of an intent-based audience, you need to have a presence there. It's very important. Whereas if you do ads on Facebook or other things like that, they aren't asking for your ads. That's disruptive marketing, okay? So yes, you're showing up in front of a lot of people, but it's like a billboard. You don't know that they need an apartment, okay? So apartments.com, rent, apartment list, these ILSs, they have a great audience for you. So you definitely need to be on them. They're All their pricing models are different. So find one that's affordable and in your budget, but you need to do it. Social media is unpaid. I don't need to talk about it. Everybody knows you need to have a social media presence. Okay, for in my opinion, social media is going to be more um, for your representation to your current residents, more so than your prospective residents. Okay, you need to build a community, build a home, allow them to build friendships at the community level. There's no better retention than friendships. People like to live with their friends. So if you can help build those that community and those friendships, and there's a lot of ways to do that, okay? And there's, there's great people out there that can help you do that. Um, but you need to, to work on your community. Okay, unpaid. This is gonna be SEO. And we're gonna try as, to use one of August's terms, demystify it for you, okay? SEO is not this magical thing that's out there built only to confuse people. There is a big algorithm behind it that, makes it weird and, and difficult to understand sometimes. But we're going to cut out half of that by just saying that there's two types of SEO. There's there's traditional, what I call national, and then there's local. 
For properties, we only care about local. You're not competing. If you have a property in Phoenix, it's not competing with a property in Chicago or Florida or anywhere else. You're really only competing within a two to five mile radius of your building. So we need to be hyper localized. Um, so where apartment lists and apartments.com, they can beat us on the national level all day long. I don't care. We're not, we're not competing at that level. We don't need to worry about it. Um, hey, John, quick question for you on the social media part. Um, is, is this also relevant for class C properties? Let's say um, the, the case study you mentioned, 40, 40 some odds units. Is it worth to even have social media pages for that small of a property? If you want to stay occupied, it is. Wow. I would say that it's because it's the, com it all comes down to the community that you're building and community, not meaning the physical building, the community, meaning the people that are surrounding each other. Right. And so you, Facebook groups, fa a Facebook page that's built for other people in the community to talk about what's going on in the community, what they've seen, what's going on. Are there, is there going to be a movie night? Is there going to be a, you know, are they going to be handing out uh, Chick-fil-A in the morning in the parking lot? things like that for little announcements talk about hey guys don't forget it's freezing this you know this week so make sure that you drip your faucets whatever right you build that community and allow them to to talk to to one another right it's the whole idea of user generated content let your okay. it's all about building friendships in the community itself and so there's an I'll, I'll take a really just two seconds to talk about apartment life apartment life is a company national and wife team in most cases on a property in exchange for an apartment. You give them an apartment, they live there. They are the welcome welcome wagon. They take the welcome gifts to the new people who are moving in. They organize all of your property's events. They do the charcuterie boards, the movie nights, the barbecues, the pool parties. They do all of it. They build that community. Their goal is to make sure that the people that live there have friends there, right? And that one thing will will like their numbers are crazy on retention. So again, and I talk about another company you need to have on the show to talk. Apartment life is them because from a retention standpoint, I've never heard of anything that works better. So it's very, very important um, as far as retaining your residents. Okay, Google business profile. This is free for you guys. Google makes it free. It is tedious because you need to be consistent with it. Okay. So it's absolutely imperative that you take ownership of your business profile. There's no better marketing tool in your tool belt. This is the most important thing. If you don't hear anything else from me today, you need to own your Google business profile simply because when you're out there searching for an apartment, you're using your Google to do it, right? You're either on the maps or you're in uh, in Chrome or on your device looking for it. Well, the maps is what is going to show up. Uh, you're going to show up in the most often. Google will be responsible for sending you more prospects than apartments.com, almost guaranteed. Okay. But you have to show up. In order to show up, you have to be consistent. Okay. It only works as hard as you work. I do this, our company does this, but I highly recommend you don't hire anybody to do it unless you absolutely have to. If you cannot make the time to do it yourself, hire a company. But my post will never be as good as your post. I'm not there, I'm not on site, I don't know what's going on. My posts are gonna be generic. Your posts are gonna be specific, okay? But my post will be very consistent and that's the key. So make sure you set a calendar reminder three days a week, update your, your Google profile for each property, right? They don't have to be big. And Google gives you a lot of different ways to update your profile. So it can be anything from hours of operations, responding to reviews. Uh, it could be a post, like a social post. It could be adding a photo. There's a, a frequently asked questions. There's so many things you can do, but never do more than one thing at a time because you're going you're gonna to feel like you run out of content, right? So space them out. Okay, so this is a good profile. I'm gonna skip over. They Barrett Creek, they use most of the different things that you that you have available to you. There's a newer thing they've added in the last six months or so where you can actually do messages. Um, it's amazing. Uh, people can literally chat you right here through the through this through a bot. 
and it will go directly to your, you can make it go to your cell phone. You can, um, it go, they have a dashboard. You can respond anyways. Very cool. John, and John, what's the, what's the benefit again of updating on a constant basis, the Google business profile? So this is the benefit. Okay. So right here, you see the map pack. That's what this is referred to. So a second ago, I showed you the top five, right? The top five is paid for. These three are earned. I let it soak in for a second. You have to earn it. You earn it by working. It is elbow grease. You've got to go and post consistently. If you post every other day, Google sees that you are active. Most properties are not active. So you will work your way up the list. You only get, there's only three spots. That's your goal, top three. Okay, whereas we don't have five that we're buying, you only have three. If you click on this little button here that says more places, you're gonna show up somewhere in that list, but that's Google's equivalent to apartments.com. You show up right next to your competitors. You might be on page one, 10, 15. You don't know where you're gonna show up. But if you post consistently, you'll work your way up the list. If you don't post, you don't have a shot. You're not, you're not even gonna be close, right? So make sure you are working is the really the moral of the story there. Okay, offline traffic sources, banners, print items, outreach. These are normal. These are things you're probably already doing. You, if not, then I, I feel like these are things that have been done for a very long time. The goal when you're thinking about this is stand out. Don't be boring, right? Make sure that you have trackable things. So it could be a trackable URL, trackable phone number. QR codes are huge right now, thanks to COVID, right? They've been around forever, but COVID actually popularized them and, and normalized it. So now you can, you can use QR codes for anything. Um, benefits to QR codes. They, they can go to a specific place, right? So that's very important. Because remember, one of the main things in marketing to remember is never make people work. You don't want to make them work. So if you're trying to get somebody to your tour form to take a tour and you have a QR code on a banner outside your apartments that says schedule a tour, you better make sure that QR code is going directly to your schedule a tour, right? Don't take them to the homepage and make them work, right? Well, then other nice thing about QR codes is you can change where they point without changing the code. So you can leverage one code for multiple purposes and it can change over time. That's that's huge, right? So that's really helpful. Uh, website URLs, you can track those. Trackable URLs like Bitly. You probably heard of Bitly. You can track specific URLs. So if I have a, I have one URL on a business card and a different URL on a brochure, and I know how many leads the business card sent me versus the brochure. You can go down a whole path on on that, and that's a, another hour of conversation that I'm happy to have. So the path, in order to create these opportunities that we're driving the traffic to, we have to have somewhere to send them. That's going to bring us to the website. So the website is where we get to control the story. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough. You, you do not own very many medium media outlets. Your website, you own. Your email list, you own. Your social media, you do not own, right? That's Facebook's. They own that. They own everything on it. Um, there's so many things we do. Our Google ads, we don't own that. Google owns that. There's so many things that we forget that we don't own. We're not in charge of. They can change on us in a second, right? Well, our websites, we get to tell the story. We get to set the narrative. We know our demographic. And so that this is our, our place to talk. Right. And so we're going to tell them a story. Our goal is to get these people to relate to the property as fast as we can. People have the, the uh, attention span of a goldfish. So y'all probably already tuned me out, but I hope not. You keep listening to this. Right. So the point of, the, of this is to get them to relate to us. How do we do it? We're going to do it through our headlines, our text and our images. So when we use words, we have to think about what our our prospects, our avatars are thinking about when they do it. Most of the time, I would say over 90% of the time, you are not your avatar. You're in a totally different world than the people that you're buying and renting apartments for, right? These people are not you, right? And so you have to put your head in a different space when you're thinking about what are they typing in? 
what are they looking for, right? So, so, so John, quick question for you: if, if if a client comes to you and they want their average rent price for their property is twelve hundred, and another client comes to you and an average rent price is twenty five hundred, is two is that two different strategies because there's two different avatars? Absolutely, not different strategies, but different text, different headlines, different pictures, right? So. Again, know your avatar, know your persona of that person that is going to be your ideal resident. That's that's very important. And that's also, okay, I, I know I told you I was going to intertwine some, some stuff for your capital raisers as well. It, it's very important. Know your investor. Who are you looking for? What are they looking to invest in? How do I talk to them? Don't try to talk to 18 different avatars. You'll drive yourself crazy and you won't make very much progress know your avatar, know what they like, know what they invest in, know what they are searching for, know what demographics, what areas, all of that. Because if their goal is to invest in a class A property and you're only selling C's, you're talking to the wrong audience, right? You need to talk to a different person, a different persona. And if you, if you do have those different groups, you need to target everything you're doing for that group so every ad, every brochure, every deck, everything to the specific group you're talking to. Okay, that's very important. It's hard, that's why it's hard to hit multiple avatars at once, especially when you're building a personal brand, right? So you are the, let's just say you are the BTR people. Well, if you're the BTR people, then everything you do is BTR. You live, breathe, sleep BTR. So everything that you're talking to is that, right? Whereas if I am a class C operator, every single thing is a class C operators. So yeah, know your audience. Thank you. That was, that was a good question. Um, okay. So here's a good example. Apartment homes that can fit your whole family for dinner, right? Well, I may have typed into Google. I may, as this, I might be a single mom looking for an affordable apartment that, that I can, that I can actually afford. So I type in affordable apartments in Phoenix. I don't want the website to be like, hey, this is it. It's all you can afford. So I hope you like it, right? It's not, you're not, your headline's not gonna say, hey, we're affordable in Phoenix. You need to say, look, we're, this is what my heart wants is I want an apartment that I can raise my family in, that my whole family can fit in, that we can all have dinner at. I know that I can afford it because that's when it came up for when I typed in affordable apartments, right? Because if I type, I'll tell you, when we're doing AdWords, if it's a luxury apartment, we do not use the words affordable apartment anywhere in our terms, right? Anywhere in our search terms. It's not there because we want to attract the right personas. Imagery. Okay, this top picture here is what we get 90% of the time. It's beautiful to you and to your contractor, not to the person moving in. This is an empty, cold apartment. It might look great. It fits all my needs, but it doesn't show me that there's any life in it. Okay. So use pictures that have plants, have people, have something, have furniture. So you can get an image exactly like this virtually staged and it's not very expensive. And I'm not saying don't use these. These pictures have the, have a place in a gallery, maybe on a, on a floor plan uh, gallery or something like that, but not as primary images on your website. You need to include people. People like people. They want to know there's people there, that there's life there, that there's community there. Again, it goes back to this whole retention thing. Nobody wants, even if they are introverts, they don't really want to not be around people. And if they do, that's fine. They can do that too. But these are samples of really good um, stock photos that you can use, right? This could be any coffee shop in the world. You have no idea where it is. We're just saying, hey, you can have community around us. We have, there's coffee shops. Move in picture. Again, we're not showing the flooring. We're not showing the appliances. We're not showing uh, the bathrooms. We're not showing anything in this image that gives away where this apartment is or what the finish outs are. But there's people having fun. You should do that in the pool. Again, we don't show the deck. We don't show anything. It literally could be a lady floating in any pool in the world. Uh, okay, floor plans. Again, if you only hear the two things I say today, you heard Google business. The second thing is don't skimp on your floor plans. There's not another industry that I've ever been part of that has a secondary website page that gets as much traffic as your homepage. Your floor plans do. Don't skimp. Don't use crappy floor plans. Pay for it. They're not that expensive. 
this page is going to have more conversions for you than any other page of your site. The 2D image, I, I typically tell people, do a 2D, a 3D, and a Matterport. The 2D images are really there so that they can kind of see the finish outs and kind of imagine their furniture in that space. The 3D one, it's virtually staged. So they can kind of get a feel for, okay, yeah, that's, a, that's about as big as my couch, I think. And they can kind of see where things are and all of that. But the real magic happens in this virtual tour. Again, COVID popularized them. They will never go away from here on out. They're here to stay. Again, two, two, 300 bucks maybe to get a Matterport done. Uh, you need to have at least one Matterport for each unit type on there. Okay, so it's important to do these because it lets them physically walk, not physically, but virtually walk through your units. It will help you with your online leasing. Neighborhood, talk about your neighborhoods, tell them where they're going to be living, show them what's around. Um, it's important. Again, you, it should be a curated list. So you're in control of it. Your website should allow you to be in control of it. We're driving qualified traffic. We're helping you We're tell, to tell the right story. Now we've got to convert those people into leases. So we do this on your website. Again, you're in control, which is great. So here we're going to have calls to action spread out through the website. A call to action or a CTA is really there to help them take the next step that you want them to take. Okay, so apply now is an easy one. Uh, apply now buttons should be pretty much everywhere, right? You need to make them easily clickable from anywhere where they are on the site where that decision could have been made. Schedule a tour. Again, make it easy. Make it make it in a very predominant area. Typically, it's up in the top of your menu bar, usually on the right over there somewhere. But give them these buttons to click on and then check out your floor plans. Again, you're going to have a lot of conversions as soon as people can start visualizing themselves in your space. Your forms, make sure you get enough data in your forms. These forms, they should be able to connect with your CRM. So whether the CRM you're using is built into your property management system. So if you're using real page, that might be ILM or, or L2L or something like that. It could be Knock or Anyone Home. There, there's a lot of great CRMs out there, but you should be pushing your prospects directly into that CRM. So your leasing team can grab them without missing a beat. Triggered pop-ups. Again, this is a, a great marketing tool. Marketers hate them. We get tired of them. Uh, owners get tired of them because no one's going to visit your site more than you do. So you're just going to, it's going to annoy the heck out of you. But to the visitors to your site, they work. So keep them. Okay. It's an opportunity to hit them when they need to be hit. I like to launch these about three to five seconds after their first uh, page loads. And I can say, hey, did you just letting you know that we're offering these specials, something like that. And then I trigger another one um, as I see their mouse move up to the URL bar, because that's a sign of exit intent. So when we know that someone is about to leave our website, I like to pop up one more time and say, hey, don't forget, or, you know, don't, you know, we're offering this just for you or whatever, right? You have one more opportunity to get them to take that next step and to book a tour or whatever it is you want them to do. Final problem is delinquency. That's a big problem in, in reality, right? A lot of people have these delinquent payers. Circa is a, it's a friend of mine in all transparency, but they're a great company. There's others. Flex is another one. There's a lot of these companies, technology companies out there that help you to make paying rent easier for people that are having hard times, right? So they'll, they'll put it into like a weekly payment plan or something like that. So look into, into companies that can help you with your delinquency issues. Another big problem solver for delinquency is simply allowing for online rent payments. That sounds silly to even say. We're in 2023. Why in the world would you not have that? I'm Surprisingly, it happens all the time. Okay, so if that's you, no shame, but you need to add, you need to add a button to click to pay. Okay, people want it and you'll, your rent payments will go up almost immediately. Okay, lack of marketing knowledge, touched on that. Low rate of conversion, touched on that. And the positive return on your investors will happen during the conversion process. The more people we can get in your space, the faster we can get them there, the more money you will have and your investors will be happy. Man, we did that very fast.
Um, nice presentation, John. Thank you. Presentation. Now, are you, is it? No, oh, we can keep going, right? It's all, it's done. Yeah, I'll, okay, so let's, let, here's a few questions. Just just listening and watching to you this whole time, I, 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 rem I remember the voice of many gurus I've heard <laughs> oh, on, online, which they talk about, hey, you know, raise some money, buy a multifamily property. Then from there on, you just give it to the property manager. The property manager does the renovations themselves. It becomes passive. This doesn't seem like that. This seems like a fully functioning business at, at what point? No, I totally understand. I, I knew that, uh, you know, obviously being in real, in real estate majority of my career, I knew that's not the way it works. Uh, it, it, buying multifamily uh, property is like buying a business and marketing and, and, and so on and so forth is parts of that business. But wh where, where did the job of the property manager who is being, uh, whose compensation is performance-based, they're getting a percentage of the rent they bring in. So if they, the more they keep your property occupied, the more of an income they make, the better their, their brand is to get more properties in that area because they've done a great job. Where do they come into the picture? Is this, is your strategy an alter, and I, and I think we touched on this earlier, is this an alternative way to go to property management marketing? Can, why can't a, an investor leave it up to them? Because that's what I was, most people are under the impression that all the stuff you mentioned, the property manager should be doing it. And they absolutely should. And I typically work a lot with the, the property management companies so I do work a lot with investors that are either self-managing, they need, and there's, and there's a lot of those out there, right? And so we come in and help. 20 million, 20 million apartment units are being, uh, 20 million apartment uh, units are being managed by private mom and pops. Uh, and there's like 43 million in the US and like half of them are, are yeah, managed. By half of them are being managed by mom and pops. So yeah, of course, they, they your services will be perfect for them. But for groups that are using a property management firm, do they bring you supplemental if, for example, they're not getting the occupancy they need? Like, tell us, talk to us about that. I would say smart property management companies bring me in as part of their standard operating procedure. So they say part of your service fees are going to cover this and you're going to have to pay this above what you're paying us to get our, our rents, right? So they, again, most property management companies, they are not going to have the marketing expertise or people on their staff to do everything themselves. They're bringing in basically project managers who can manage a team. So you're going to be managing your apartments.com rep. You're going to be managing your website person. You're going to be managing whoever's doing ads for you. You're going to be managing the printer that's going to be doing the printing for you. So they're going to be managing a lot of people, the sign guy, all of that. And so we are part of that process. So again, I encourage property management companies to say, look, this is our standard operating procedure. You're going to do these things. And if you're going to hire us, you're buying us, you're, you're, you're paying us for our processes. Our process is we need to go here to get the website. We need to do these marketing steps. We're going to do this for AdWords. It, it's just part of doing business, right? You have to have it. Now, who manages me is the is more of the question. And and I feel like that depends on, are you a self-manager or are, do you have a management company? We don't, either way, we're, we don't mind, right? We're going to work with both of you. But it's not an either or, do you need a management company or do you use us? We work in conjunction with your management company because I'm not going to deal with any of your residents directly, right? Got it. Just, so what is your advice to a newer syndicator who's didn't even know your services existed before, who's just talked to their property manager and the property's like, yeah, well, the property manager's like, yeah, we'll take care of all of that. Should 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 that syndicator connect you with their property manager? Or to should see? you all have a meeting together so that you can huh. see what the property manager has planned already and how? So absolutely. Um, we walk carefully, I guess, in the scenarios, because a lot of times, uh, especially if it's a pre-existing relationship and the manager is already there, already doing everything. And then the owner comes in and is like, well, I'm not happy with what y'all are doing. I want you to talk to this company. And, and that, I mean, again, you can ma imagine like building websites for 25 years or whatever. I've had to walk carefully around IT guys for, you know, you know, you're not doing a bad job, IT guy, your website's horrible, but it's okay. You know, let us come in. We're going to, you're, you're the man and we're going to work with you. You know, my job is to make you look good. Yeah. My job is to make the managers look amazing. 
I want to make the, because if I can drive leases or leads, they're going to look great to their owners, right? Because their owners just want leases. That's it. It's simple. They want leases. They want in, they want an NOI. They want positive NOI. They want an ocu high occupancy rate. And, and really they put it out to the managers to get there. My job is to make them look good, right? I don't want to cut them out of the middle because I don't want to do what they do. I just want to do the marketing. So if, if um, it's an introduction to the property management group, I love those because more than likely that property management group can bring me more clients than just that one, right? And so if I can build a good relationship with the management company, then that benefits me and it benefits them. I can help them organize their processes. I can help them get a superior marketing plan in place and make them look even better to those owners, right? And so, but we... Yeah, we're very easy going slightly. And John cool. understands it because he's a passive investor in a lot of syndications. So he knows that when that NOI increases, it benefits everybody. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now, uh, we're also started a series of our masterclass real estate investing series where we, we do live webinars. So we're going to definitely invite you to come on there so people can have ask, ask questions from you directly. But you're easy to reach. Uh, you know, you're probably at every conference, the conference out there as well, is, but yeah, uh, we'll put those in the show notes. Let's get to the second segment of our show. Thank you so much for sharing all yeah. of that. Really <laughs> interesting. I think this is going to get a lot of interest because really most people, help a lot of people out, especially right now in distressed times. Hundred percent. Like I could just see I was people, about the people whole time. listen, like we got to blast this out so that you'll get lots of calls because right now people need your assistance yeah. to be honest with you. Okay. Awesome. Let's do this. Okay. Here we go, John. We're going to, we're going to go to the next segment. It's called the 10 championship rounds of financial freedom are you ready i'm ready okay whatever comes top of mind here we go first question who's been the most influential person in your life oh my goodness oh um, probably my dad i and you probably get that a lot but yeah it's probably my dad so entrepreneur serial well he's not a serial entrepreneur but he's an entrepreneur business owner i am a serial entrepreneur for sure um learned a ton from him and just am amazed again by by him all so yeah I'd say my dad. I love that. Nice. All right, John, second question. What's the number one book you'd recommend? That's a really, really, I read a ton of books. Probably Think and Grow Rich um, by Napoleon Hill, right? Written in the 30s, amazing book. Mm -hmm. I feel like it has so many uh, parallels today. It doesn't get old. It's on an annual read list. So I definitely, you know, would recommend anybody to read that. Make my kids read that. They've, they've already read it at least okay. once. Oh, nice. He's an annual read list. I mean, it's you on read my it? annual. It's on my annual reading list. Yes. I read it every nice. year. I love that. Nice. Okay. Next question. If you had the opportunity to travel back in time, what advice would you give your younger self? Oh man. Oh, it definitely would be to start investing earlier. Not, I mean, in real estate for sure. It'd be, okay. It would actually be listen to my great aunt who told me only invest in real estate and art. <laughs> and I would start investing immediately then. So yeah, that's exactly right. Nice, nice. Okay, next question. What's the best investment you've ever made? This is gonna be a little bit tricky just because I feel like the best investment we can make is in our own companies. And my own company has probably been the best thing I've ever invested in is that's what actually has made me the most, is the best return on my investment yes. every single month, right? So um so as a business owner, my best investment is my company. Nice. Uh, yeah. All right. What's the worst investment you've ever made and what lessons did you learn from it? It's still to be out. It's, I'm not going to say Bitcoin because I'm still holding out that it turns around. <laughs> so that was a big one. Uh, it's at 30K, man. It's not bad. <laughs> not bad. It, it's bad from when I bought it. Yes. <laughs> so, right. right. I bought it on the wrong end of the market. It'll go uh, back up. It'll go back up. Yeah, I know. That's what everyone, that's what we're hoping, yes. right? So, uh, okay. Worst one outside of crypto. I've had a couple sketchy, sketchy ones on multifamily, which again, it comes back down to really knowing who you're investing in and trusting those investors, uh, knowing the leads, trusting the GPs and the deal and, and looking at the track record and, and looking at that. So I've had a, uh, I've had one, I haven't lost money, but I haven't made money either, right? And so there's a big, a big portion, a big chunk of change is put into it with no return. And so that's that can hurt. All right. Okay, next question, John. 
how much would you need in the bank to retire today? What's your number? Okay. So I've been thinking about this a lot uh, on, for me personally, for me really to retire, which I'll never, you probably get that a lot too. I'll never retire. Um, I go stir crazy. 10 million in the bank because at a 4% bond, I'd be making 400 grand a year. That's nice. great. That's all you, you don't need more than that. Yeah. 100. Yeah. yeah. 100. Nice way to look at it. <laughs> All right. If you could have dinner with someone dead or alive, who would it be? Again, good question, because th this is not one that I've really spent. I, I think that most people that I want to meet, I don't have a ton of questions that I want to ask them. I want them to have an opportunity just to talk, because I feel like if I was to sit down with somebody that I recognize off TV, everybody's out to get them, right? It's like always like, oh, man, I loved you in this. or what? I just want to hear them. I want to get I want to be more of a friend and not just like a follower right so it, yeah there's so many people like that that i would love to just sit down and hear their story i just want to what got you where you are you know i mean and and feel i want them to feel comfortable with me right yeah. to be able to tell you that because everybody like that's always on guard yeah. so you mean to say any famous person right that i would say but napoleon hill would be awesome i feel like he was so influential on so many business people and investors and he sends out like Andrew Carnegie and these guys that again just would have been amazing to just sit and listen I'd love to be at a table sitting with one of those guys with you while y'all are interviewing them and I just get to absorb yeah. <laughs> I just get to absorb it I just wanted to hear it and I'm not always the best at asking the right questions but I'd love to listen to the story nice. amazing amazing love that all right next question if you weren't doing what you're doing today what would you be doing now there's never been another plan. So as early as I can remember, second grade, third grade, whatever, I've been selling stuff, right? So entrepreneur from day one, come from an entrepreneurial family. So if I wasn't doing marketing, it would be another business, right? It would be a business. There is no doubt in my mind that it's, and again, it might not always be marketing. Today it's marketing. Right? I thought he was going to say superhero because of the <laughs> Spider-Man behind him there. <laughs> All right. He'd uh, be building something, another building another business. <laughs> I love building stuff. All right. Okay. All right. Next question. Book smarts or street smarts? Street smarts. Street smarts all the way. Okay. All the way. Yeah, without without a doubt. I think I learned more. Uh, it, my education post-college has cost me probably 10 times as much and taught caught taught me 10 times as much yeah. as my schools ever did yeah right but hard knocks school of hard knocks you learn so much more yeah yeah i like that last question john all right if you had a million dollars in cash and you had to make one investment today what would it be alexa says she doesn't know that uh, <laughs> uh let's see <laughs> uh, a million bucks today and i can only put it in one place Yes. Okay, man. Okay, I can put, only put it in one place. I would put it in probably a fund that was actually investing in 30 things. So it wouldn't be a stock market fund. That would be a real estate fund. Okay. Right? So I, I put it into a real estate fund that was probably cross-discipline, like over looking at cross industries, right? So probably some self-storage and some multifamily, some industrial uh, in retail. So I, I would put nice. it in one that actually handles all those. That's okay. really cool. It's the first time we got that. Yeah. Very, di very safe way of going yeah, about I love it. That. Yeah. Very but still hopefully with high returns, right? Of course. Of course. I could have said bond, yeah. but I thought, no, I don't want to say bond. Yes. That'd be my 4%, right. but awesome man really appreciate all the transparency all the education you provided to us. Yeah. It was uh, really great, John. Maybe just tell people what's the best way they can reach you. Okay. I'm, I'm very, very easy to get a hold of. So my cell phone number is probably on almost everything. 214-477-9450. Uh, Anybody can call me. Uh, you're probably going to leave a voicemail and I'll call you back. My websites, all my websites are great. And actually, I'll throw up uh, real quick. Here is uh, QR codes for you. So nice. Look at that. you can book a consultation on the right. We have a monthly newsletter, AdWords. This was just the slide from that deck. So sorry that they're all, it's a bunch of them, but... Again, email address, phone number, 
URL for CFD. It'll be, it'll be in the show notes as well. It'll be in the show notes as well. It's, but it's maybe everywhere. you can say your website just uh, for people early. listening. Yeah, bswifty.com. It's B E Swifty, S W I F T Y.com. Uh, you can find me there or criterionb.com, C R I T E R I O N, and the letter B is in boy.com. Awesome. Right on, John. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks that. so right. much, John. This Thank you great... so much for having me. It's been yeah. really fun. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode. We hope this conversation enlightened you on how to win big in this highly profitable and risk adverse space. Get on your feet and embrace this world that offers so many opportunities just waiting for you out there. Continue your journey to becoming a savvy real estate expert by subscribing to the show at cpicapital.ca. Don't forget to leave a positive rating and share with your friends. See you on the next one.